हरे कृष्णा थैंक यू इंडिया डिवोटीज ए वेरी हैप्पी टू सी ऑल दिस माइ फ्रेंड्स इज हियर दिस इवनिंग आई होप एवरीबॉडी अंडरस्टैंड्स इन दिस राइट और नीड ट्रांसलेशन नो ओके सो दिस इज अ वेरी वेरी ऑफिशियस बिगिनिंग वी आर वेरी हैप्पी टू हैव अमंगस्ट अस His Holiness Dr. Bindavinath Narsimha Swami Gurudev, and uh, this evening we all have assembled in this Krishna Bhavan Temple to perform this auspicious Adiyo ceremony. So, at the outset, I request His Holiness to come and sit on the Asas Asana, and then. I will speak a few words for the disciples. What is the importance of this ceremony that we will do all from now and tomorrow? We will have the auspicious Vyasa Puja appearance and celebration of our Sri Guru Dev. So, in Vedic literature, is not as is. In the Vedic literature, there is mention about the celebration of Adivas. Adivas festival is normally conducted the day before the main festival. So tomorrow is main festival, right? And today is the preparation day. You can say for the festival. We have seen when Janava Mata. She celebrated this Golden Festival for the first time in our Gauri Vishnu history near Nalanda Thakur Place, uh, Rash Sai, where six deities were installed. So she performed this Arivas ceremony, where she invited all the Vaishnavas the day before the camp. Like you all have assembled here, the preparation has been going on for some time. We are not going to do this celebration, celebration here. So all the Vaishnavas they have now arrived. And today evening, what we are going to do? We are actually through this auspicious ceremony. We are preparing our mind for tomorrow. That like the, the song says, "Na kali hove kirtan ajyogi kirtan adivas." Means tomorrow we are going to glorify the Guru Dev. Therefore, today we are going to have the preparation of our mind. In preparing our mind, so that we can now think, what is our responsibility for the Guru Dev? For example, Guru Maharaj, the representative of Krishna, he comes to this world to help us connect with Krishna. That means on the on the uh, day of initiation, we all have taken the vow, right? That we follow four regulatory principles. We go from our sadhana bhakti and instructed by our Guru. So that's a kind of again reconfirmation or re-establishment of our firm relationship. Sometimes what happens? Disciples. They are you not know, born doing their services, and sometimes they come to the class. So to ensure that yes, now again tomorrow our Guru Dev is here, so let us now have that firm commitment. So to come to that point, we are preparing our consciousness, our approach, our mind, and this is the thing where we have uh, gathered all those auspicious articles. Starting with the earth, you know, Kundalas, then Meru, we have Chandra, all these your fruits, turmeric. Uh, so all these auspicious articles are first offered to the deities, and then to Tulasi Maharani, then of course Prabhupada or Kamal Chandra, then to Arunde, and then we put back. Then first of all, we will take all items 
then individually one minority article first. Then at the end we will keep all the articles in the plate. Then all total again with all the items. So this is how we will offer these articles and we will prepare our consciousness so that we can tomorrow uh, go for the celebration of the Gaspira ceremony. And of course tomorrow we should all fast until puja is completed. So from now on we should be kind of you know, meditating. Nothing happens without pre-meditation. So what we going to do tomorrow, the preparation is starting right now, preparation of our consciousness. So now I'd like to invite our Kirtanias to come forward and start the Kirtan and then our Pujari, he will help with the deities and I can offer to Buddha. This is how we will continue the same. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Sishya Divas, Sarimani Ki Jai.
installed many different deities also. And it was a very wonderful festival. All the devotees were taking part. Naratam Das Thakur was there, of course. It was his place. Janavi was there. She was the Acharya. And then other great devotees, they came not only from Mayapur, they came from Vrindavan, they came from Puri, they came from many places, all came to observe this wonderful Purpunima festival in order of Sri in honor of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And in the course of the festival, the devotees could feel the appearance of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself. He personally manifested there, especially during the kirtans. Lord Nityananda and Lord Chaitanya, they would personally appear in the kirtans. So, when the devotees have that mood, when they have that mood to submission of submission and surrender to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, then the Lord reciprocates and He manifests Himself. Just as He did, just as He does, there are different places where Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu manifests regularly. For example, uh, at the home of Sachimata, whenever Sachimata would offer food, then Lord Chaitanya would personally come there in his other bhav form and accept the offerings. Lord Chaitanya, of course, had left home at the age of 24. He had renounced the family life and he'd gone away as a sannyasi. So he could not come home again because his wife was there. The sannyasi will never come with a previous wife. That's not allowed. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu never went back home, but in his Avirbhat form, he would personally appear in the home of Sachimata and accept the offerings. Because his mother would cook for him, and out of love, she would offer the food, and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, out of his love for his mother, he would come there and accept the offerings, and eat the offerings, and taste them. So that was one place where Sri Chaitanya manifested himself. Another place where Ch Ch Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appeared was in the home of Raghava Pandit. Raghava Pandit was a great devotee who lived in Panihati. Panihati is on the bank of the Ganges and it's not very far away from Calcutta. Very near actually to Calcutta. Not to go to Mayapur, it's several hours to go to Mayapur, but to go to Panihati, you can go very easily. You could take even the, the city bus to go there to Panihati. And so Raghava Pandit was living there in Panihati and it was there that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would come. Because Raghava Pandit who was a very great devotee, and he lived there along with his sister. His sister was called, uh, she was Dami Hanti, and they were both very devoted to Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. They would cook preparations for Lord Chaitanya, and they would prepare these preparations, and they would put them in a sack, and then they would carry them. When devotees all went to Rathiyatra in Jagannath Puri, they would carry the sack of all the different preparations which Raghava Pandit and his sister had prepared, and they would bring them to Jagannath Puri and give to Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And by the mystic potency of these devotees, everything they cooked would stay perfectly fresh. Nothing would go bad. Although they cooked it several weeks and even months before, but when they brought it to Jagannath Puri, it would still be fresh. And they would give, these sacks were called Raghava Jilly. 
Raghava Jali, the sex of Raghava Pandit, he would bring this food to Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would accept it and he would keep it and he wouldn't immediately eat it. And then sometimes Raghava Pandit would have to remind Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu that we brought you all of these preparations, you have not tasted anything yet. So then Lord Chaitanya would bring them out and he would begin to taste them and everything would be fresh and very relishable and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would enjoy this, these offerings of Raghava Pandit. And whenever, uh, Raghava, whenever, Lord Ch whenever Raghava Pandit would offer, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would come there to the home of Raghava Pandit and he would enjoy being there in the house of Raghava Pandit. And in this way, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was reciprocating with his devotees. He liked to appear, and he would appear in his Avirbhav form, the unmanifested form. But those who were devotees, they could see Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And it was in Panihati that Raghunathas also got the mercy of Lord Nityananda. So this Panihati is a very special holy place and we have a temple there now by the grace of His Holiness by Teacher Swami Maharaj. He purchased a, a temple there just on the banks of the Ganga and it's just beside the spot where Lord Nityananda gave mercy to Raghava Pandit. Raghava Pandit, Raghava, uh, Raghunath, 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 not Raghunath, Raghava Pandit of course is also there in Panihati, but Raghunath got the mercy of Lord Nityananda at Panihati also. So Panihati is an important place. Raghunath had come there to meet Lord Nityananda. Lord Nityananda was traveling with his devotees and they were going from village to village performing Sankirtan. <coughs> Lord Nityananda had been told by Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu that he should stay in Bengal. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, it's not very convenient for me to be in Bengal now that I am a sannyasi. So he said, you should stay there and preach there. And so Lord Nityananda was traveling in Bengal. And Bengal means East Bengal and West Bengal. Nowadays we only think of, you know, Bengal, the part of India, West Bengal. But there's also East Bengal, which is Bangladesh. And so Lord Nityananda, many devotees, they all come from, they all go to Bangladesh, they would travel there, there are many holy places there in Bangladesh. But this place Panihati is also a very nice, very special place because Raghunath Das got the mercy of Lord Nityananda. And by the mercy of Lord Nityananda, Raghunath Das was able to leave his material life and go and join Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in Jagannath Puri. And he never went back again to the material world. He stayed in Jagannath Puri so long as Lord Chaitanya was manifesting his pastimes. And when Lord Chaitanya completed his pastimes and disappeared from this world, so then at that time, Swarup Damodar Goswami also disappeared. And within a year, Gadarhar Pandit also left the world. So, so many great devotees, they disappeared from the world. And Raghunath thought, what to do? There's no point for me to remain in this world. So he thought, I will go to Vrindavan and I will jump off over downhill and end my life. However, Raghunath Das went there to Vrindavan and he got the association of Rupa and Sanatana. And in this way he remained in the world for quite a long time and 
he went to reside also at Radakund and he helped to develop the Radakund to make the beautiful bathing mat there. So in this way Raghunath Das made wonderful contribution to the mission of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. It was Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu who discovered, who renovated all the holy places. These places were not known to the devotees. And it was Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu who had to come there and personally show the devotees. For example, Radha Kund. Nobody knew where is Radha Kund. But Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is none different from Lord Krishna. And Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came there and he went into the middle of a rice field and he told the devotees, this is the spot, this is the place, this is Radha Kund. And the devotees then, they were surprised, they wondered, how could it be just a rice field? But Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is omniscient, he's the Supreme Lord, he's Krishna himself, and he, he revealed that this is actually the spot, this is Radha Kund. And so the devotees, in the course of time, they were able to renovate that and make it into the beautiful bathing gap, which is there today. Not immediately, but after some time, Krishna arranged. Krishna sent someone with money, and he used the money to make the beautiful bathing gap which we call Radha Kund. The whole village now, of course, is called Radha Kund. But in the time of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, there was nothing there. It was only rice fields and some wheat fields and villages, nothing really, not much of a village there. Now, Radha Kund is quite a big village. It's more like a town than a village. There's many people there many houses, so everything has changed since the time of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu encouraged the devotees to perform different functions like this. Lord Chaitanya would celebrate uh, the different festivals like Dol Yatra, and of course all the holy days, the appearances of the different avatars, Lord Chaitanya would celebrate them. And one time also they celebrated the Asapuja. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said he wanted to observe the Asapuja and they arranged a big festival. So we should understand that the Vyasa Puja it is not just a, it's not simply a glorification of one person, but it's the glorification of all of the acharyas in the line of the disciplic succession. The, the spiritual teacher will sit on a seat called the Vyas Asana, which means the seat of Vyasadi. So the spiritual teacher is considered to be the representative of Vyasadeva. Of course, he's not Vyasadeva, but he's considered representative because he's speaking the message of Vyasadeva. He's speaking from the scriptures which Srila Vyasadeva compiled, like Srimad Bhagavatam which is the ripened fruit of all of the Vedic literature. So, this festival is to honor all of the Acharyas, and particularly, of course, we want to honor the founder Acharya of our society, His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. In our ISKCON society, when a devotee receives initiation, it's not that he's simply being initiated as a disciple of the Guru, but he's being initiated as a member of ISKCON. 
So this is a very important distinction between the ISKCON society and other spiritual teachers. Other spiritual teachers, when they may accept disciples and they think of the disciple as being their property. But in ISKCON, when you are initiated in ISKCON, you become a member of ISKCON. It's not that you belong to that spiritual teacher, but you're accepting that spiritual teacher as a representative of the society, and he is initiating you into the society so that you can be connected to the founder Acharya of our society, who of course is his divine grace, Abhay Charan Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. And by connecting to Srila Prabhupada, then we connect to the previous Acharyas. Just as Srila Prabhupada accepted initiation from his spiritual teacher, Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati Thakur, who is also known as Prabhupada. So the connection to the spiritual teacher is crucial for progress in spiritual life. We do need to accept the spiritual teacher. It's the, it's the tradition. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu took initiation. His spiritual master was Ishwara Puri. And then we saw also Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur also took initiation. Bhaktivinoda Thakur's initiating guru was someone called Vipin Bihari Goswami. And at the time Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur was initiated, Vipin Bihari Goswami was younger than him. So although Bhaktivinoda Thakur was a very learned and aristocratic person, he had been the High Court judge in Jagannath Puri and he had written many books and everything. But he understood the importance of accepting the spiritual teacher and he took initiation from Vipin Bihari Goswami. His Shiksha Guru, of course, was Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj. And when it came time for Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati Thakur to establish the Gaudiya Math, at that time he chose what pictures to put on the altar and the line of the cyclic succession. So Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati put Jagannath Das Babaji to the, to the uh, left side of Bhaktivinoda Thakur, indicating that Jagannath Das Babaji was his guru. But Jagannath Das Babaji was his Shiksha guru. He never actually gave him Diksha, but he did, he did give Shiksha. So Jagannath Das Babaji was given that position. And Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati wanted to teach all of us that actually Shiksha is more important than Diksha. Taking the instruction is more important than simply being initiated. And everyone, many people come and get initiation, but not everyone takes instruction. And so it's the instructions which actually help us to progress on the spiritual path. We need to take the instruction from both the spiritual teacher in his different manifestations, just like Srila Prabhupada is the Shiksha Guru for all the devotees in ISKCON. So as the Shiksha Guru, he is guiding all the devotees in ISKCON. We're all under the shelter of His Divine Grace, Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. And we get the instruction from Prabhupada by regularly reading his books. His books are very central in our ISKCON society that we give classes based on the books of Srila Prabhupada. And Srila Prabhupada's books are based on the teachings of his guru and the previous acharyas. 
and particularly the teaching of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. It was Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu who emphasized the Srimad Bhagavatam, that, that this was the ripened fruit of the Vedas. And Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself would take great pleasure every day in hearing Srimad Bhagavatam. And he would go to hear it from the mouth of Gadarha Pandit. That was usually. Usually it would take place at the temple of Tota Gopina. Those, who, those of you who have been to Jagannath Puri, you will know there is a temple of Tota Gopina there and the deity of Gadarha Pandit is there. And so Gadarha Pandit would stay there, serve his deity of Tota Gopina, and daily Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would go there and hear Srimad Bhagavatam from the mouth of Gadarha Pandit. And so Gadarha Pandit, uh, Lord Chaitanya would like to hear particularly the pastimes of Prahlad Maharaj and Dhruva Maharaj. They would be very pleasing to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And this way Chaitanya Mahaprabhu passed uh, 18 years in Jagannath Puri hearing Srimad Bhagavatam regularly. So our ISKCON centers are also based on these same principles that we worship the deity and every day we also speak Srimad Bhagavatam. It is a basic part of the spiritual program. So tomorrow morning also we will have also Srimad Bhagavatam class as every ISKCON center does. It's very important for us to regularly hear. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gave great importance to the hearing process. And the more we read Prabhupada's books, then the more we are hearing the spiritual knowledge. We want to progress in spiritual life. It's important for us to hear and to hear from authorized sources. So if we hear from Srila Prabhupada's books, then we can get good knowledge. All right, so we will, we will not talk any further tonight. We're going to have a program tomorrow. We have many things to do tomorrow. So we will end here. Is there any question before we close? If there's any question. Any question? You got to search it? Yes? Lord Krishna, we know that Lord Krishna came as Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to understand the mood of Sri Mati Radharani. Yes? So, uh, but Srimati Radharani is the energy, Khadini, of Lord Krishna. Yes? Srimati Radharani is the energy of Lord Krishna, Khadini, Khadini energy. So, why Lord Krishna uh, couldn't understand? Thank uh, you. Uh, why uh, Lord Krishna couldn't understand uh, the mood of uh, his own energy? Well, I wouldn't say that he couldn't understand the mood of his energy, but he just liked to hear. He liked to hear from Gandharu Pandit. And of course, he's aware of the identity of Gandharu Pandit. And Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is cultivating Radha Bhav. So what better person to cultivate Radha Bhav from than Gadarha Pandit, because Gadarha Pandit is the expansion of Srimati Radharani. Yes, it's the Lord's energy. It's, you can't say that he doesn't understand it, but he likes to hear. He likes to hear it directly from the manifestation of that energy. That's why we hear from Gadarha Pandit. 
It's not that he doesn't know anything. He knows everything. But he takes pleasure in hearing it from the devotees. Just like Lord Chaitanya met with Ramananda Rai. Now, Lord Chaitanya asked questions to Ramananda Rai. Many questions Lord Chaitanya asked to Ramananda Rai. It's not that Lord Chaitanya doesn't know or he's asking questions. It doesn't mean he doesn't know. It's just he wants to hear from these devotees. Just like in the Srimad Bhagavatam, if you study the chapter 87 of the 10th canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, the prayers by the personified Vedas. So it describes, uh, there was a question asked by Maharaj Pariksha to Sukadeva Goswami. He wanted to know how Brahman, which is spirit, could ever be described by material works. So Sukadeva Goswami said, oh, this question was asked previously. This question was asked in, uh, it was uh, the fourth, up in Janaloka. Janaloka is one of the higher planets in the universe. Above Swargaloka, there is Mahaloka, there is Janaloka, Tapaloka, and Satyaloka. Four planetary systems at the top of the universe. Satyaloka is the planet of Brahma. So Janaloka is one of the top planets way up in the top of the universe. And great sages live there. And the four Kumaras were also there. So the four Kumaras were there in Janaloka. And the question was asked there also that how could how can Brahman be described by material words? And so it said all of the great sages who were present, they could all answer it because they were all fully realized in knowledge. They all knew the answer, but one of them was chosen to speak. Just like I'm speaking tonight, now there are so many learned devotees here. It's not that I'm the only one but somehow I'm chosen to speak. So there are so many other people who can also speak and probably speak better than me. But I'm somehow I am chosen to speak tonight. And so similarly on Jana Loka, the, the question was to be discussed. So they asked Sanandan Kumar, one of the four Kumaras, you speak. Now any of them could have spoken. There are four Kumaras, they all know, but one of them was chosen to speak. And there were so many other great sages, they were also there, they could have spoken, but one person was chosen to speak. Just like when Maharaj Pariksit was cursed, Sukadeva Goswami came to speak. There were so, Narada Muni was there, Vyasadeva was there, they were all there. Why didn't they speak? Sukadev was chosen to speak. It was he was the one chosen. So they uh, and they came to hear. Narada Muni and Vyasa Dev. Vyasa is the father of Sukadeva Goswami. He, they're happy to hear. And so in the same way, Lord Chaitanya would be happy to hear from Gadara not that he's ever in ignorance about him. Alright, thank you very much. Hare Krishna, Shiva Prabhupada, Kriya.
Okay, uh, let all the children come and take the first.